Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode from the Multi Tools and Blades channel. Today we're going to have a look at the Sog Parator from the early 1990s. It was Sog's first attempt at a folding multi-tool and it was made in collaboration with Blackie Collins who had a real fondness for this black Zytel material. The sheath is made from a single piece but it does do a good job of staying on a belt and to remove the tool all you need to do is just take this little tab up the top here that's holding it in place, just pull it back and the tool just slides out like so. I guess it would be a lot easier for me to do it here in my hands than if it was on my belt though. So would have been quite wary of Leatherman's patents on their PST, so when they brought this out, they had to make a few little changes just to make sure they didn't encroach on those patents. The first and most obvious is the way the plier head folds out. You just use that little lever there. If you take notice, just from this point here, if I continue to move the plier head out, the handles actually start to spread apart, just like open up just a little bit. Have a look at it as I, as I close it, they'll come together right here. From this point on it gets a little bit stiff but you just sort of do one handle at a time and it just locks into place. There we go. So I've got a lot of confidence that's not going to fold up on me unlike the buck tools. When it's in its unfolded position it feels just like every other 4 inch multi tool like a PST, rebar or a gerbar. The players do need to be open for you to access the inside tools. First up we have the serrated sheep's foot knife. The way to tell if you've got an early production version of one of these is that the little nail neck here is not completely hollow all the way through. There's quite a bit of tension on that spring. Next to that we have the file. There is no tang stamp and double cut on both sides. In between the serrated blade and the file we have two size screwdrivers and a Phillips. These little nail nicks in here are just absolutely awful. All of the very early power tools all had this patent pending stamp instead of a patent number so look out for that and the very very first production run also had a lot more holes cut out went up one two three four and then back down to three so keep an eye out for that as well if you're collecting. Okay, so if we flip it over, we've got some more tools on this side. This one start off obviously with the well, let's get back in focus. So we have the Rima, another screw, another flat screwdriver, can opener, and the main blade. This will be part of the typical tool set that you're going to see with as this tool transitioned onto the power plier and the pocket power plier. If you own one of those other ones, you'll probably see that they look exactly the same. They haven't really changed them that much even to today. That reamer there looks like it's been milled. So there have been a few little progressive changes along the way just for improvements, you know, of production and that. So closing it up can be a little bit of a, a task. It does really lock in quite hard, so you just really got to force it and it goes in. Once it's in, of course, you've got to put them in separately or else the, the handles don't go together properly. Make sure that everything lines up and then close it up like so. And you're ready to put it away. Now it's a great little tool if you want to add it to your collection, highly recommend it, try to get an early one if you can. That's it for another episode, hope you've enjoyed it, feel free to leave me any comments, hit that like and subscribe button and I'm going to catch you all next time.